Good afternoon. Welcome to Capital Account. I'm Lauren Lister here in Washington, D.C. These are your headlines for Tuesday, August 7th, 2012. J.P. Morgan says in a court filing, PFG's subpoena of the bank may be too burdensome. So will J.P. Morgan get its way and get out of it? Well, it looks like they could be off the hook for accusations of silver manipulation. This is amid a Financial Times story reporting U.S. regulators are increasingly likely to drop their investigation of silver manipulation after four years failing to find enough evidence to pursue the case. Now, I should mention one key regulator doth protest this report, but we'll find out what Chris Powell thinks. He's co-founder and treasurer of the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. Plus, it's been fodder for many a tale. I'm talking about this. This, as they say, is where the plot thickens. They knocked over the Federal Reserve. I'm referring to questions about the true state of the U.S.'s gold reserves. Well, reportedly, the federal government is auditing the gold stored at the New York Fed, at least. So are those who've been calling for an audit for years satisfied, or does this miss the point? And while we're on precious metals, our shares in Walmart, you heard me right, as good as gold? Well, some are suggesting the discount retailer is the new safe haven. But what does that mean exactly? Well, here's one of our guests recently talking about Walmart. And that's essentially a food stamp play. Mm. In some of their stores, as much as 40% of their revenue is, uh, is actually food stamp. There you have it. Go long government subsidies. We'll discuss. Let's get to today's capital account. market manipulation today because yesterday the Financial Times came out with a story that I have right here that U.S. regulators four-year investigation into possible manipulation of the silver market looks more like it's going to be dropped. Now FT reported U.S. regulators have just not found enough evidence to support a legal case according to three people they cite familiar with the situation. Now, since then, Bart Chilton has told a Motley Fool reporter, and we confirm this with his office, that this FT report is premature and inaccurate. Now, Chilton says he thinks the public deserves some answers in the near future. We'll see about that. But Bart Chilton, of course, is the CFTC commissioner who said two years ago that he believed there had been fraudulent efforts to deviously control the silver price. Now, what's interesting is given recent events, is this seemingly new world where the mainstream is rethinking what it's thought of in the past as conspiracies. Just listen to CNBC. You hear about these things, and you used to think that these were conspiracy theories, right? You hear, about, you hear this about that there are people are manipulating LIBOR, people are manipulating the, the silver markets, and you'd say... And they are. They are. They are. <laughs> and they are. And they are. And that's not all. The Gold Antitrust Action Committee, GATT, since 1998, has been exposing, opposing, and litigating against collusion to control the price and supply of gold. Now, GATA has collected and published dozens of documents showing Western Treasury and central bank efforts to intervene both openly and surreptitiously against a free market in gold. And Chris Powell is here to tell us about it. He's co-founder and treasurer of GATA and managing editor of the journal Inquirer, too, I should mention. And he's come all the way to D.C. to our studio just for us to tell us what he thinks of some of this latest news and where GATA is in its efforts now. So first, I just want to say thanks so much for making the trip and for being here. What an honor. Uh, no, it's mine, Lauren. I'm delighted to be here. Well, we're delighted to have you in our audience loves this topic and is fascinated by it. So I do want to start with some of the latest news that, is, that has come out. One story, the Los Angeles Times reports that, in fact, the federal government has been auditing the gold that's stored at the New York Fed, drilling holes in it to make sure that it's actual gold. Uh, what's your reaction to this story, and how far does this go in addressing some of the concerns that you folks at GATA have been laying out for years? It, it does not strike us, Lauren, as being terribly relevant at all. Our complaint has not been that uh, the United States does not have gold bars in its several uh, depositories and that there's not gold in the New York Fed. 
our complaint has been uh, the uh, the ownership of that gold has it been oversubscribed, over pledged, has it been uh, leased or swapped with the gold of other central banks uh, so that the other central banks might intervene in, in the market. Uh, we sued the Federal Reserve back in 2009. Uh, and we elicited a statement from a Fed uh, Board of Governors member, uh, Kevin M. Warsh, that the Fed has secret gold swap arrangements with foreign banks and that these documents were among the documents that the Fed did not want to release to us. Uh, so we know that the Fed is surreptitiously active in the gold market. Uh, we just don't know who owns the gold. That's what we want to find out. How much has, has, has U.S. gold been pledged? How much has U.S. gold been swapped uh, with uh, the gold of other central banks so that other central banks might intervene in the gold market to keep the U.S. government's fingerprints off uh, the, uh, uh, the transaction? Uh, uh, we believe there's gold there. We don't think the drilling of it really accomplishes much. We want to get into the records to see how many ownership claims there are to it. Uh -huh. So this doesn't answer your questions. Drilling, drilling holes into uh, two to five percent of the U.S.'s gold that is reportedly stole, <laughs> stored there is not going to solve it. Now let's talk a little bit more about manipulation, but of the silver market, because this is another story that's come out this week, is this article in the Financial Times that the U.S.'s four-year probe of possible silver market manipulation has essentially gone cold, that they don't have enough evidence to pursue a legal case. Uh, in your research and, and experience, is that true? Is there just not enough evidence to move forward with well, any kind if, of real if, case? If, if the silver market is not manipulated, Lauren, today, it's the only market that is not manipulated. And I would have to congratulate silver traders for finding the market that's not manipulated. Of course, we, we think uh, differently. But uh, there's two issues about that uh, Financial Times story. The first question is, is it really disinformation? Is it a plant? Uh, by people who would like, uh, for example, the, the silver shorts to be uh, let out of their predicament a little bit easier by discouraging the longs in the market uh, from thinking that the CFTC was ever going to set that market right. Uh, Bart Shilton, uh, as you mentioned, the CFT commissioner, uh, says that uh, no, there hasn't been a decision yet. Nevertheless, I don't expect the CFTC to come up with anything here. They've been going on with this for almost four years. If they couldn't find something by now, they're not going to find something. I think they have been told, finally, candidly, that the silver market manipulation is a U.S. government operation, likely undertaken through the Exchange Stabilization Fund, uh, and that uh, uh, the CFTC can't get into it because this is a national security issue. People uh, forget that back in 1965, when silver was officially demonetized by a new coinage act in the United States, as he signed the legislation, President Johnson warned silver investors not to invest in silver, not to drive the price up, because he said the United States government would dishoard from its strategic silver stockpile to rig the silver price. You can find that signing statement on the presidential papers internet site of the University of California at Santa Barbara. Since 1965, the United States government has pledged to rig the silver market. Well, this is really interesting what you're saying, because that's a twist that I didn't expect in terms of silver, because what we've heard is, is there are allegations that private banks have been uh, trying to manipulate the gold price or the silver price, excuse me, and have JP Morgan is one that investors and, and all over the blogosphere, people have alleged, has, has, involved, has been involved in, in doing this. Uh, and, and in fact, according to this article, the CFTC has been analyzing files and records from JP Morgan in their investigation. I do want to play what their head of global commodities, Blythe Masters, said in response to it because she did answer a question about it once saying, yes, there is a lot of speculation about this on the blogosphere and here is why it appears that JP Morgan has such a large silver position. I want to play that and then get your reaction. Often when uh, customers have that metal stored in our facilities, they hedge it on a forward basis through JP Morgan, uh, who in turn hedges itself in the commodity markets. If you see only the hedges mm -hmm. and our activity in the futures market, but you aren't aware of the underlying client position that we're hedging, then it would suggest inaccurately that we're running a large directional position. So I guess first, do you buy that and what is your take on whether or not J.P. Morgan has been manipulating the silver market? And then in addition, I guess this, this angle, you, you look at, at government manipulation and evidence of it, but, but how, do you, how does that stack up against private banks too? Yeah, well, I, I think Masters is telling the truth, if only because Jamie Dimon, the CEO 
of Morgan Chase made similar statements uh, about the monetary metals markets and uh, the Morgan position in those markets a few years ago. Uh, I think basically what they're saying is these positions, while they're on our books, are not our own positions. Well, whose positions might they be then? Uh, they very well might be U.S. government positions. Morgan, for example, has enormous trillions of dollars of interest rate derivative positions so disproportionate to anything else in the world. Those positions could not be carried by any private bank. They could be carried only by an institution that had the back backing of a government behind it. And in fact, the United States government has an agency called the Exchange Stabilization Fund, uh, which was established by the Gold Reserve Act of 1934 uh, specifically to intervene in the gold market. As amended, the act allows the Exchange Stabilization Fund to trade secretly in any market there is and not be accountable under the law to anybody for it. Only the Treasury Secretary and the President of the United States uh, control that uh, fund and nobody uh, can answer them to ask them any question about it. So. I, I think Masters is telling the truth that this really? uh, this Morgan position is actually a U.S. government position. The client is the U.S. government. And there's no way to know or confirm that, though, right? That's a theory. Well, right? well uh, there is a way to confirm it, and you can do what my organization has done. You can sue the government for information, <laughs> or you could you could just ask the government. But you know, mainstream financial media will never put a very specific question about the monetary metals to any government agency. Mm, I, well. Maybe we'll try and change that. We're working on it today. I got to get in with the Fed. You know, I do want to bring up the Exchange Stabilization Fund. We have a full screen from the website because I want to check it out because I was reading everything you've been writing about it. And if we can't bring that up before we go to break, uh, that would be great because what it essentially says is that the legal basis of the ESF is the Gold Reserve Act of 1934, which you just talked about, Chris Powell. As amended in the late 70s, the act provides the, in part that the Department of the Treasury has has a stabilization fund consistent with the obligations of the government in the international monetary system uh, fund on orderly exchange arrangements and an orderly system of exchange rates. The secretary, with the approval of the president, may deal in gold, there you have it, foreign exchange and other instruments of credit and securities. Before we go to break, just quickly, uh, what's, how do we know what they're doing? There's no way to know because it's secret, well, you right? Can, but you can ask, this? but on, under the law, they're exempt from all the freedom of information requirements. Uh, they can do anything they want. They can trade in any market secretly, and they don't have to tell you. And that includes gold? That includes every security. You read that statute again, uh, credit and other securities. They can trade in any market they want to trade in secretly. Mm -hmm. That's the law. And, and what makes you think that they're using that in the gold market? Because I know that this plays into uh, what you believe in terms of gold manipulation. Well, because we've collected an awful lot of documents, official statements, admissions from central bankers from over the years, including some that are quite contemporaneous, that either admit or really strongly suggest surreptitious intervention in the gold market. And the ESF would be uh, a, a very convenient mechanism for them to work with. Interesting. When we get back from a break, I want to bring up some of those statements from central bankers that you've been documenting uh, over the years, including some of the most recent evidence, and we'll get more into gold manipulation. So we'll have much more after the break with Chris Powell, the co-founder and treasurer of GATA. Also, still ahead. Save money and live better? Well, that's the Walmart promise. But is the discount retailer the new investor safe haven? Well, we'll give you our two cents in loose change, but first your closing market numbers. of American power continues. Are things in our country so bad that it might actually be time for a revolution? And it turns out that a popular drink at Starbucks has a surprising ingredient, bugs. drives the world. The fear mongering used by politicians. Who makes decisions? Considerable breakthrough has already been made. Who can you trust? No one who is imbued with a global missionary zeal. Where are we heading? State controlled capitalism is called fascism. When nobody dares to ask, we do. RT question more. 
RT is the state-run English-speaking Russian channel. It's kind of like Al Jazeera. Russia today has an extremely confrontational stance when it comes to the U.S. Welcome back. We're talking precious metal market manipulation by the government. It's an intriguing subject, and Chris Powell has been done, has done a lot of work on it over the years. He's co-founder and treasurer of GATA and managing editor of the Journal Inquirer. And Chris Powell, before the break, we really got into the silver market manipulation investigation and also the audit of the New York Fed's goal. But now let's really get into your bread and butter, which is the evidence that you found, documented, and been pursuing in terms of central bank manipulation of the gold price. So I'm curious, I guess, I, I know you've been getting evidence over the years, you've submitted FOIA requests, you've sued. So I want to know what is maybe the most smoking gun piece of evidence that you've found that this is going on, and maybe also the most recent. Well, for probably most contemporaneous, Lauren, is in 2009, September 2009, a member of the Federal Reserve's Board of Governors, Kevin M. Warsh, uh, handling our Freedom of Information request to the Fed wrote our lawyer a letter explaining why the Fed was not going to give us their gold documents. Among the documents the Fed was withholding from us, Warsh wrote, were records of gold swap arrangements the Fed has with foreign banks. Well, if the Fed is not involved in the gold market, there is no need for gold swap arrangements with foreign banks. That is a confession and admission. The letter is posted at our Internet site. And as a matter of fact, uh, the Fed won that part of the lawsuit. The Fed, uh, the court ruled, U.S. District Court in the District of Columbia, ruled that the Fed does not have to give up the records of its gold swap arrangements with foreign banks. But simply the fact of those arrangements, I, I think, was a sensational confession that the Fed is involved surreptitiously in the gold market. The Fed has gold secrets. That's only one of the gold secrets that the Fed was allowed to, uh, to keep. Uh, the, 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 the Fed could be asked, what are these secrets? What don't you want us to know about the U.S. Gold Reserve? That letter acknowledging secret gold swap arrangements involving the Federal Reserve was dated uh, in September 2009. That's pretty contemporaneous. Yeah. Before we get into how it works exactly, in your view, I, I do want to ask, why would the Fed want to do this? Why, why, why would they be involved in the gold market? And, and why does anybody sitting there need to care that maybe isn't invested in gold? Governments have been involved in the gold market for a long time, Lauren. Uh, uh, in recent decades, it's because they have concluded that gold is a competitive currency, that is a currency that competes with their currencies, and more important, is a determinant, a primary determinant, of interest rates and the value of government bonds. There's much academic literature on this subject. Some of it was written by Lawrence Summers, who was then an economics professor at Harvard, went on to become assistant treasury secretary and treasury secretary of the United States. Lawrence Summers wrote a paper explaining how the gold price is a determinant of interest rates and the prices of government bonds. Governments really in suppressing the gold price are more interested in supporting government bond prices and keeping interest rates low. That is the essence of the gold price suppression scheme. So essentially when you hear Ben Bernanke say that gold is not money and the central bank holds it because it's tradition, are you thinking that he's making that up and just putting on a good I, I, he's, front? He's trying, he's trying to avoid answering the questions, like the questions we put to the Fed when we were seeking access to their gold records. Governments own gold because it is a form of money that determines interest rates and government bond prices. And you don't have to trust me. You can believe Larry Summers, who became Treasury Secretary of the United States. And why should anybody care that this is going on or potentially going on? Because this uh, gold price suppression scheme is part of a much greater scheme of controlling all the currency and commodity and equity markets in the world. Um, you know, when you control the currency markets, you do control the world. When, when Nazi Germany took over Europe in World War II, we have this image 
of the Nazi looting of occupied Europe as having been done by the Gestapo and the SS at the point of bayonets. Some of it was, but very, very little of it was. Most of the Nazi looting of Europe during World War II was done through the rigging of currency markets. Uh, much uh, histor hist historic literature on that uh, subject. If you can rig an exchange rate, uh, you can turn every citizen of an occupied country into an agent of the occupation. The Nazis arranged through the rigging of exchange rates so that the, the production of all of occupied Europe flowed into Nazi Germany and none of it flowed back out. Uh, and for uh, a few years, Nazi Germany ran one hell of a trade deficit, but because it controlled the currency markets in Europe, it didn't care. And I, I want to know how you think it works, how the price is manipulated exactly in terms of central banks, their coordination, any divide between East versus West, and the role of the BIS. Um, well, big question. At first, the, the the manipulation used to work very candidly in the open through the disordering of Western Bank gold reserves in order to keep the U.S. dollar gold price at $35 an ounce. This was done through a mechanism known as the London Gold Pool. Uh, the United States, Bank of England, uh, I believe six other Western European central banks all agreed to disord their gold reserves through the Bank of England in London into the London market at $35 an ounce. Uh, but as the war in Vietnam revved up in, in 1968 and the Great Society was was going strong and there was a lot of inflation in the United States, the gold offtake became so great that the gold pool collapsed. The, right. the, the U.S. gold reserves ran down from 25,000 tons to the 8,000 tons left today. The London gold pool at the request of the United States was closed in March 1968. That was an open mechanism of rigging the gold price. Since that time, uh, governments have tried to rig the gold price through agreements among themselves not to buy gold at market prices. We have some memorandums uh, about that. More recently, they have done it through gold leasing, which is uh, lending gold into the market at a very low interest rate, uh, created the gold carry trade with government bonds, uh, and through the, uh, uh, the futures and derivatives markets, futures, puts, uh, uh, calls on, on gold. Uh, that activity seems to take place largely through the Bank for International Settlements in, in Basel, Switzerland. But if you have access to infinite paper or electronic money. Uh, you can sell puts and calls and you can buy futures and sell futures. You can rig any market you want by bombing the market at critical points, scaring the, uh, uh, the retail longs out of it, and then you know, buying back your short positions. Uh, the Bank for International Settlements is very heavily involved in the gold market. That's a matter of public record. It's in their, their annual report. It turns up in them. But they, they, they're trying to do it indirectly now and through paper products to conserve the actual metal in their vaults. It didn't work very well for them back in 1968. They lost too much metal. I do want to keep this going for one minute uh, before we do go because I have to ask you a contemporaneous question about gold today because there are reports I'm seeing the FT saying, sell your gold, send your kids to college. It's not the safe haven everybody thought. It's been trading sideways for the last year with a lot of volatility. I'm curious what you think would make gold break out and also why the huge spread between gold mining stocks and gold? Well, um, you know, the, the Financial Times has always been against gold and they're entitled to their politics. I don't begrudge that uh, to them, Lauren. What I do begrudge the Financial Times is their, their refusal to ask any critical specific question of a central bank mm -hmm. about gold. I resent their, their willingness to be uh, the, uh, uh, the voice of disinformation. Um, but, but just before we go, what would cause the gold price to break out in your view? I, I think the truth would cause uh -huh. the gold tr price, price to break out. If, if, if the world realized that perhaps 80, 90 percent of the gold it thinks it owns does not exist, that it's really paper claims on financial institutions that do not have the gold. If, if paper gold evaporated, um, the gold price would go up very quickly. There you go. And there's a lot more information on your website that people can go look at uh, of documentation and such because there's so much more I would like to get into, but I've only got one half hour show. So I appreciate you being here. Thanks so much, Chris Thank Powell, co-founder of GATA.
All right, let's wrap up with loose change because Dimitri and I wanted to talk about this story about where investors may be turning to in a slowing global economy with volatile growth in stocks. We've seen gold as a safe haven. We talk about it a lot, but according to some reports, the metal may have some company, a big company. It's rollback time at Wall. New gold attracting investors who see its shares as a safe haven. The reason why this appealed to me and I thought it was interesting, Dimitri, is what is this saying that poverty and government subsidies are the safest bet? Because as you heard Michael Krieger at the top of our show say that Walmart is heavily driven by food stamps. Right, plant food stamps. So food stamps and then a safe haven bet is that people are going to continue to be financially strapped for cash and be looking for the best deal in town. Yeah, it's a kind of perverse logic. <clears throat> it works if you're an individual investor, but macro-wise, it's, you know. And it's funny, too. It's funny because they were, like, talking about how low prices, because that's the thing that Walmart always talks about, low prices. And, it, and that makes sense. You know, it's good. We don't want low prices. But the stock market and investing is the only place where people are looking for what's ri rising in price. And we, we, wanna, we, we get worried if, if things drop in price. But in reality, it's a good thing. It's just that it's leverage that's the problem. You've got these guys that are over-leveraged, and then... When prices drop, they get pushed out of their positions. Yeah, well, I don't know about Walmart being as good as gold, but I do want to get to this story. We don't have time to play the soundbite, probably, but it's just too good. So it seems that Botox has a growing, burgeoning population of people who are stressed out by the Eurozone crisis and other issues with trading. Wall Street. So a dermatologist was quoted or, or talked to Bloomberg and said that the largest growing sector of their customers is Wall Street men. Can you Dimitri, imagine? You have some competition. <laughs> what are you saying? That I use Botox? <laughs> I'm just uh, this, joking. <laughs> this is a great uh, image. I love this here because, you know, look at, I, 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 you, you see this in, in Blank Fine. Blank Fine's got that cold stare. Can you imagine how he looks at the doctor when he goes to inject him with Botox? Uh, we don't know if Blank Pine gets Botox, but yeah. I mean, you know. But it explains why they, why these bankers look so calm and collected in public when they are under That's right. no, scrutiny, you know, because they can't register facial expressions and, properly because the, they've been Botox. And the rumor is that <laughs> that um, that Blank Fine gets Botox in, in his forehead too. Because, you know, he's oh, got the... Yeah. No, it's not the rumor. Okay. It's what I All heard. Right. Okay, well, anyway, so I, I think this is amusing. Hollywood has some competition. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and make sure to come back tomorrow. And in the meantime, you know you can follow me on Twitter, at Lauren Lister, and give us feedback on this show. Catch any you missed at YouTube.com slash Capital Account. You can watch us in HD on Hulu at Hulu.com slash Capital Dash Account. And from everyone here, thank you so much for watching. Come back tomorrow. We'll have Scott Patterson on high-frequency trading in dark pools. And have a great night.